Hello, this is Kiwi Crash Course video number 9. As I said last time, I'm going to move away from the toy Kiwi app we've constructed so far to try and look at some other Kiwi methods and features in different circumstances. I thought a nice start to that would be to try and tackle a common sort of problem you might encounter when building your own Kiwi programs. That is, how to think about building your own widgets that combine the behaviour of existing ones in useful ways. That's sort of what we already did, but it was a bit aimless, because I just wanted to cover a lot of Kiwi features quickly. In this video, I'm instead going to use the specific question of how to make a scrollable label, a widget that will display text but which can be scrolled by clicking and dragging. Kiwi's default label doesn't have that functionality, it only displays the text, but we'll combine it with a scroll view widget that does have that scrolling behaviour. Before any of that, let's quickly set up a basic program. Uh, much as we've seen before, we'll import the widgets we need from kiwi.uex. Label. We'll import label from kiwi.ux.scrollview. The scroll view is a widget we haven't seen before, uh, but its behavior is essentially as long as its children are larger than itself, it will let you click and drag to move them around. Uh, which is exactly what we want if we're going to scroll our label whose text is too big. Um, the way I did the app before is I actually created an entire app class and used its build and run methods. You always have to do that ultimately with Kiwi, that's how you construct a Kiwi program. But here I'm going to use the quick helper function from kiwi.base import run touch app. This is simply a function that takes a widget and it will essentially make a very simple app that displays that widget and nothing else. So you usually don't want to use it for any real proper Kiwi program, because you don't have any of the other functionality of an app that you end up finding useful. But it is useful for something like this, where I just want to make a quick example and run a single widget. I also import from kiwi.lang builder. Builder, or the language module in general, is the set of tools that interpret and pass Kiwi's language that we've seen before. Um, again, previously the way I showed you using Kiwi language is using a specific file that Kiwi automatically loads for us, uh, and uses any Kiwi language definitions. But here we're going to use a slightly different technique. We can do builder.load string, and anything I write in this string will be loaded by this builder uh, and interpreted as Kiwi language and used by our program. Again, not always a good way to do things, and in a full Kiwi program you probably want to use your own file like I did before. But for a simple example, it's easiest if we use this method to put everything in the one file, and you'll see it works exactly the same. Let's make a class to be our scrollable label. Class scrollable label. And for now, let's just make it a label. I want to demonstrate a little bit of be labels behavior before I go about modifying it, just to show exactly what the problem is. And the end of our app will be run touch app scrollable label. So you see the syntax here is simply we make a widget, in this case a scrollable label, pass it to run touch app, and it will be displayed. So let's try that. There we are, pretty standard. Uh, clearly it works. Let's add oops, add some text to our label just to see what's going on. So we can make a rule for our widget scrollable label. Uh, its text property can be some really, really long string times 10. Uh, so that should obviously just be a long string the timestamp repeats it a few times and let's set its font size to the 50 just a little bit larger than the default to make it easier to see and now let's try our program again oh there we are so as you can see run touch app is ticking our label the kiwi language definitions have been loaded properly as we wanted and this long string is now displayed the immediate problem is that it's not bounded by the label kind of like we saw in the previous video if I make this smaller, it doesn't wrap the text or anything, it just makes it exceed the bounds of the window, so you can't see all of it. In the previous video, as I said, we had a similar problem, but the solution there was to set the size of the label to match the size of the text. Here we want the opposite, we want the text to be limited to match the size of the label, so as it exceeds the bounds horizontally, it should be wrapped and fit within a label. That's easy too. Label has this text size, which is a table of values, a width and a height, and what it does is it tries to fit the text within this size. What we'll do here is set it to self.size, so this text size property is the same as the label size. And that means as soon as the text exceeds the size of the label, it will try and wrap it to fit it within. Let's see exactly what goes on there. Oh, there you go. Um, 
the same string as before, but now instead of just going off the screen uh, arbitrarily far to the left or right, as we resize the window, it instead wraps it and makes it take up more lines, which is exactly what we want. We can also make the string a lot longer. So as I make this, say, 100 repeats of our simple string, now it's going to be too long to fit in the window, and we'll have to add some scrolling behavior, which is what we'll do now. What we do here is I'm going to replace our scrollable labels label base with a scroll view. So now this is the top level widget in this particular rule. And I'll add a label as a child of that. So now everything's exactly the same as before. The labels are the same. It has the same content, the same text. But it's within this scroll view. Actually, without making any more changes, nothing would change whatsoever because the scroll view by default sizes the label to fit exactly within it. What we need to do instead is to give the label a manual size and have the label manually get longer and become too large to fit within the scroll view. That's the point at which the scroll view will kick in with its own behavior and allow us to drag the label around to see different parts of it. In fact, I can even demo now. Now I've made the string a lot longer, but I still can't see off the screen uh, where there's still things below it. And I can't drag it around yet because the scroll view is automatically sizing our label to fit exactly within it. The same kind of behavior we've seen with Kiwi widgets before. The solution will not be surprising uh, if you follow the previous videos. We're going to set the label size hint uh, y to none. So it's size hint x is still 1. The width of the label is still the width of the scroll view, which means this text size declaration will still work. In fact, let's even be specific with that. The text should be wrapped to the table's width, but it should have no wrapping in the vertical direction. We don't want to limit its vertical height. Uh, its vertical size hint is none, and now we can set the height of the label to self.texture size uh, 1. This is again something we've seen before, uh, if you follow the previous videos. The texture size is the property that contains the real size of the displayed text. You can think of the, the text is kind of rendered to an image, and that's the height of that image, in this case, the second entry in its tuple. Maybe this seems a bit convoluted, but if you just go through it, it's pretty clear what's going on. We first set the text size to be limited by the width of the label, so the text will be wrapped if it exceeds the weight label width, that's step one. We set the height of the label to none, so it's not going to be automatically resized by anything, it's always going to be able to set its own height. And we set the height of the label to the real height of the text, so as the height of the text uh, gets larger and the text gets too long to fit within a scroll view, the label itself will get larger, the scroll view will recognize that and let us scroll it. So let's try it and see. And there you are. Now I can click and drag, and I can go down all the way to the bottom of the widget, all the way to the top. Scroll view automatically takes care of the boundaries. It doesn't let us go too far. And in fact, it even has this nice behavior. If we do go too far, it bounces back. That's something you can modify if you look at the documentation. We can't scroll left and right because the label is exactly the right size in that direction. We set the um, we set its width to match the scroll view's width, so nothing special happens there. And we get exactly the kind of scrollable label we want. Uh, I'm not sure if you'll be able to see in the video, probably you can, but at the left on the right here there is a even a moving scroll bar to show you how far you've gone. This is again something you can modify by modifying the scroll view's properties if you check the documentation. And I think in the next Kiwi version you can even do things like add a proper desktop style scroll bar, so you'll be able to scroll by scrolling and clicking on that instead of anywhere. For now, let's make one more change. So. I've kind of advertised this as a scrollable label, but at the moment it's really a label inside a scroll view, so the user has to know about that and change the label's text specifically to uh, modify it. What we can do instead is make it behave more like a real label. We can give it a text property, a string property, and import the right property, properties import. So again, you can probably see this is kind of drawn together quite a lot of things I've done in previous videos. We've made our own class and now we're giving it our own property. We can now edit that in Kiwi language. We don't want the labels text to be set uh, in the Kiwi language, but the scroll views, the scrollable labels text. And our labels text can track that by setting it to follow root.txt. And again, as explained repeatedly before, this will automatically make a binding so the labels text will always follow the scrollable label. And now this is totally transparent. If I was making a full Kiwi app, I wouldn't have to care about the fact that there's a scroll view involved or a label. 
I'd simply create a scrollable label, set its text to whatever I wanted, and that would automatically be propagated through all the rest of the widget, and all this behavior automatically follows the right behavior, uh, the, the right settings to give us the scrolling behavior we want, as long as the text is too big to fit within the scroll view. So let's just see that, just to prove I didn't change anything there. And as before, still I can scroll it, uh, no changes, and we have a nice scrollable label widget ready to use elsewhere in a program. So I'll stop there. Uh, I hope that wasn't too fast a run through how to make this widget. It is sort of a little bit fiddly, but it's not complicated as long as you understand how label works. Um, remember, we separately we have to make sure we set it the right size. The label widget itself has to be the right size because that's what the scroll view sees and uses to allow us to scroll. Within the label, we always have to think about, do we want the text to wrap? And if we do, we can set this text size. Uh, that's fine, you can see this is exactly how you do it, and you can play with these parameters if you want. You can even do things like add a padding, uh, similar to the CSS property, if you want to add that kind of behavior. Uh, and finally, we have to make sure we manually set the label's size hint and its height to track the right to track the size of the actual text. Uh, so as the text gets longer, it doesn't just exceed the bounds of the label, but the label actually gets longer to fit it in. And as usual, I encourage you to experiment if that's not clear. Uh, it really is very easy to change these things and just to see what slightly different behavior you'll get if you do. For the next video, I haven't decided exactly what I'd do yet, but I think I want to try and do something about layouts. I've had quite a lot of people asking about general hints and tips on how to do layouts in Kiwi, uh, how to use the different layout classes, and how not to use them. They're not always the right thing to use. We'll see that next time though. For now, thank you for watching.